Good morning. This week, we continue on with a reading from 1 Samuel. I'm actually using a reading that was meant for last week, but I thought we can't miss the opportunity to hear about one of the best Sunday school stories. This is the one of David and Goliath. Let me begin by reading this with you. I've chosen to share it with you from the message. I just couldn't resist using this version. Master, said David, don't give up hope. I'm ready to go and fight the Philistine. Saul answered David, you can't go and fight the Philistine. You are too young and inexperienced and he's been at this fighting business since before you were born. David said, I've been a shepherd, tending sheep for the father. Whenever a lion or a bear comes and took a lamb from the flock, I go after it, knock it down and rescue the lamb. If it turned on me, I grab it by the throat, wring its neck and kill it. Lion or bear, it made no difference. I killed it and I'll do the same to the Philistine pig who is taunting the troops of God alive. God who delivered me from the teeth of the lion and the paws of the bear will deliver me from the Philistine. Saul said, go and God help you. Then Saul outfitted David as a soldier in armor. He put his bronze helmet on his head and belted his sword on him over the armor. David tried to walk, but he could hardly budge. David said to Saul, I can't even move with all this stuff on. I'm not used to this and he took it all off. Then David took his shepherd's staff, selected five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his pocket of his shepherd's pack and with his sling in his hand, approached Goliath. As the Philistine paced back and forth, his shield bearer in front of him, he noticed David. He, noted, he took one look down on him and sneered. A mere boy, apple-cheeked and peach-fuzzed, the Philistine ridiculed David. I am a dog that you've come after me with a stick? And he cursed him by his gods. Come on, said the Philistine. I'll make roadkill of you for the buzzards. I'll turn you into a tasty morsel for the field mice. David answered, you come at me with sword and spear and battle axe. I come at you in the name of God of the angel armies, the God of Israel's troops, whom you curse and mock. This very day, God is handing you over to me. I am about to kill you, cut off your head, and serve you up your body and the bodies of your Philistine buddies to the crows and coyotes. The whole earth will know there is an extraordinary God in Israel, and everyone gathered here will learn that God doesn't save by means of sword or spear. The battle belongs to God. He's handing you to us on a platter. The aroused this ra that roused the Philistine, and he started toward David. David took off from the front line, running toward the Philistine. David reached into his pocket for a stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine hard in the forehead, embedding the stone deeply. The Philistine crashed face down in the dirt. This is a story about bullies and heroes. It's also a story about faith and force meeting head on. Can you imagine coming face to face with such a character? Goliath was a champion Philistine, a giant man. I read that he stood nearly 10 feet tall. I have no idea how much he weighed, but the coat of armor he wore, I read, weighed around 125 pounds, and the head of the spear weighed another 15 pounds. He is a horned giant who comes out to David on the plains. In David's generation, Israel's very existence was threatened by the Philistines. The Philistines had come to Canaan from the eastern Mediterranean islands about the same time as the Israelites in and around 1200 BC. From Asia Minor, which is part of our modern day Turkey, to Egypt, they invaded, they pillaged, and destroyed one village, one city after another. Over time, they were able to hold the coastline and create conflict and trouble for Israel. Over the years, they were able to design superior weapons and had used them to their advantage, winning most military battles with those they attacked. And I read all of this happened before they had their secret weapon, a man named Goliath. As one commentary pointed out, 
The text doesn't even bother to use the words like strong or fierce or bold in describing him because it is simply understood. What was it that caused David to stand up to Goliath? Maybe he had a call upon his life. Maybe there was something that touched him and connected him with something beyond himself. I wonder when this type of thing happens to each of us, when we are faced with giants in our lives that threaten and challenge us. They are real today as they were in David's day. Just think about it. Have you ever felt overwhelmed and overpowered by circumstances? As if you were up against something that was bigger and stronger than you. What was that giant? Have you ever felt that you just weren't up to what was being asked of you? Let's face it, we all face giants, Philistines in our lives. Sometimes they are personal and unique in our own particular situation. Goliath might be an illness, the loss of a loved one, gosh, even loneliness. And other times, Goliath, well, it might be more systemic, violence throughout the world, racism, pandemics. Goliath shows up in lots of ways. I really liked what one person had to say about this. He said that every time Goliath showed up to the battle lines, the battle is not what we think it is. We just tend to see the, the battle lines as the liberals against the conservatives or those who support a leader and those who don't. Sometimes the battle lines are between different faiths, the rich and the poor, diff different ethnic groups. None of those he went on to point out are the primary battle of the day. They are actually a manifestation of a deeper and more consequential battle. The primary battle is the one from the heart. This is the battle to determine who we are, how we want to live, and who we will serve. That's the wager Goliath threw down to David and the battle to which David stepped up. David goes to King Saul and says he will do battle with Goliath. Of course, Saul says no way at first to his offer, but Saul is confronted with a young man who truly believes in the idea of God will stand beside him. Although he is young, David is surrounded by his youthful nerve and passionate faith. So Saul asks him how he will fight the battle. And without hesitating, David asserts that as a shepherd who has killed lions and bears with his sling and stones, and most important, God's power has always delivered him from death's jaws. With a sling and stone, David saved his flock. Now with a sling and five smooth stones, David will defeat Goliath with the power of God. With his whole heart, he believes God will deliver him in the face of the Philistine because he believes God is the great deliverer. So as we see the battle begin between the two of them, Goliath steps forward, covered and armed with his weaponry. He comes to David with spear, sword and javelin, not to mention his brute force and strength. Gosh, today those weapons would be compared to guns and bombs and tanks. Or they could be intimidation and discrimination. Maybe the most dangerous weapon is a closed mind and, and, and hard heart. In the face of a giant like Goliath, gosh, I know the temptation would be to respond in kind by arming ourselves with weapons that ha we have at least the same strength or maybe even something more powerful. But I think we all know from watching all the political drama in the U.S. this last year that all that doesn't escalate anything but the fighting. Even Saul, however, thought that David should at least meet Goliath on Goliath's terms. So Saul dresses him in armor and what does David do? He takes it off. He doesn't fit. It's not what he is. He stepped forward instead armed with faith. He is willing to reclaim, to hold value by being a peacemaker. He was being a prime example of one who worked for justice and compassion to love our neighbor as ourselves. Don't get me wrong. I don't think there are, aren't times when we are more like Goliath. We arm ourselves so that we can dominate, overpower, even eliminate because we are acting out in fear, anger, oh gosh, or even in frustration over the Goliath that we face. 
And yes, this reading from 1 Samuel does show the violent defeat of the giant, the strong. Yet as Bruce Epperlea, who writes a blog that I like to read regularly, said, when we trust God, we can respond with courage and strength to the forces that threaten to, fe to defeat us. Power belongs to God, and our alignment with God's vision, not the bullies or the oppressors or those who would pl plan evil. God makes a way when there is no way. And he goes on further to say, and I just love this part, the storms of life will not cease. Bullies may continue to threaten us, and external factors may put us at risk, but nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There is nothing more powerful than that, knowing that we are not alone. May you find some peace in knowing that, in whatever you may face, whatever your Goliath might be, this moment, this day, this week.